Next up, we got a flyweight battle between Zagas and Mugula from Kazakhstan and Manal Kopp from Portugal. Kopp goes by Starboy. He's 16 and 6 overall. 3 and 2 in his last 5 fights. Currently quite a favorite of the money line at minus 250. He's 28 years old. 5 foot 5 in highway 68 inch reach. He's training out of AKA Thailand. As for Zagas, he goes by Zako. He's 14 and 5 overall. 3 and 2 in his last 5 fights. Plus 200 in the current money line. 33 years old, 5'4", in and height with 66-inch reach. He's out of Erkin Kush. He's also training out of Arlington MMA Pro Team. So a slight height and reach advantage there for Cop. Looking at the public vote here on Tapology, Cop is the favorite here, getting 78% of the votes on Tapology. I think that Zagas is going to be an upset here. I think, you know, the guy's got some experience. Uh, we'll break it down in more detail, but I like Zagas to win the fight. Looking at some of the striking numbers here in the fighters, Zagas is landing 3.71 strikes per minute. He's absorbing 4.23, so not a good ratio. He's obviously receiving more punches or kicks than he's dishing out, so not great there. As for Manel Kopp, he's landing 4.21 strikes per minute, a little busier. He's absorbing 4.09, so he's a positive, at least in his striking department, versus what he's receiving. For takedown offense, Zagas is landing 0.86 takedowns per 15 minutes compared to Manel Kopp, who's landing just about a takedown and a half per 15 minutes, so Manel Kopp is the busier wrestler. For defense, though, for takedown defense, Zagas is get defending at 80% clip, whereas Manel Kopp's defending at a 50% clip. So a little better there. Both fighters have had three fights in the UFC. Those numbers are based on those three fights in the UFC. So Zagas is a little bit better defending the takedowns. So looking here at some notes in the fighters, let's start here with uh, Zagas first. So Zagas, he actually lost his UFC debut back in 2020 to Raul and Piava. Um, but that's a good fighter. You know, he had a good account of himself, went the distance, um, and lost a close decision. He also lost to um, Amir Albazi, and that's a guy who's 14-1, and one, a very good fighter as well. Um, so notable losses, but good losses, good quality losses. His most notable wins have probably would be against Tyson Nam and Jerome Rivera, his last fight. Doesn't say very much, but just, you know, keep it at 100 there. Um, some positives here about Zagas. Um, he's only been finished one time in his career, okay? He got finished by TKO six years ago. So the guy's very durable, very tough, has fought some pretty good fighters. Um, at quality levels, um, good promotions. So he's very durable, not easy to get out of there. His wrestling and grappling, he's built like a wrestler. You know, he's very good in that department. So he can survive guys who are trying to submit him. Um, he's got some submission skills himself. He doesn't wrestle a lot in terms of, you know, pursuing a takedown per se, um, but he can defend takedowns really well. He can find himself in positive positions. He can reverse, reverse positions on the ground. So he's just overall good wrestler. He uses feints and changes levels, um, especially early in the fight when he's fresh. Um, so he's not a standing target, so he's good on his feet in terms of his standing defense. He's moving, you know, he's up and down. He's giving the look as if he's going to get a takedown or just changing levels. So I do like that about him. He gets up quickly. So if he gets taken down, his stand-up game is good. He's feisty. He gets back up quickly. doesn't stay on his back for lengthy periods of time. He's a very active fighter. Third fight for him this year. So third fight in 2021. He did fight, I think, once or twice in 2020. But 2020, 2019 was tough for all fighters because of COVID. But again, very active fighter. Um, notably, again, he went the distance against Piava and Albazi. Those two guys combined are 35 and 4. So again, just a note there, very durable fighter, right? The distance, he went six total rounds with Piava and Albazi. So some negatives here on, on um, Zumagula or some things that are, you know, questionable. He's 1 and 2 in his last three fights. So he's 1 and 2 in the UFC. So not a blazing start to his UFC career. He's got a very low finish rate. Matter of fact, in his last eight fights, he only has one finish in the last eight fights. Um, and that's like over a five or six year period, I believe. His boxing technique, how do I describe it? He's got some power in his hands. Um, he doesn't throw a lot of combinations, um, but they're quite looping punches. So he, he punches in a way that's very prototypical of a wrestler. And he's a pretty good wrestler. He's built like a wrestler, but very looping off balance shots. Okay, so Manol Kopp, let's talk about Manol Kopp. He fought his first MMA fight when he was 14 years old. So this guy is from Portugal. If you look at the profile, profile picture, you could tell he's probably got some other ethnicity going on there. Uh, yes, he's from also Angola. So he's, he's, he's from Angola, but I guess he grew up in Portugal. So he's got roots from both countries. He represents Portugal as his, as his native country, I guess, per se. Um, in any case, at 14 years old, he fights his first you know, MMA fight. He makes his pro debut at 17 years old in Cage Fighters 2. He won his pro debut at 17 years old with a TKO. Um, he's a former Ryzen Bantamweight champion, so came out of Ryzen, pretty decent promotion. His father's a former world champion in boxing, so comes from a family that's been involved in you know, combat fighting or martial arts of some kind. He's got a high finish rate, okay? He's got seven finishes in a row. So of his last seven fights that he's won, he's won those seven fights all by some kind of a finish, and all were knockouts with the exception of one submission. He's only been finished once in his career, um, so again, pretty durable. And the guy who finished him, it was by submission in 2017. It was Kyoji Haraguchi, who 
Hodokuchi's fighting this Friday night um, in Bellator. He's a former, uh, I believe, former Ryzen champion, a former Bellator champion. He's actually going for the Bellator belt again this Friday night. So that was a quality loss against a good opponent. It was again by submission, not by knockout. Very active fighter, like I said as well about Zalgas. Both fighters are fighting their third fight this year in 2021. So you do like to see that both fighters are active. Now some negatives or some cons here on Manel Kopp. He lost two close decisions against Nicolau and Pantoja. They were both very close. Some people felt that he may have won both those fights or maybe one of those fights. When you look at them, it's definitely close. My concern there is when, when, when fights are close that he doesn't necessarily step on the gas and do enough to win the rounds. Um, he's 28 years old, so he may be making improvements in that department, but I have noticed that in the recent past where he was in fights, like especially the fight I believe in Nicolau, Nicolau would be like on his back and welcome him just to come on, you know, get on top of him. And Manel Kopp was like, no, either just hesitant because he wasn't confident in his BJJ game or worried about what Nicolau could do to him. But he needed to do that to take top control, take some control time, you know, get some position points, you know, just to sort of solidify those rounds. And he didn't do that. And it cost him the fight. He lost that fight by split decision. So in any case, um, see some moments in the rounds where maybe he could do more. And so close decisions, he's tend to be on the wrong side of those. He came in overweight in his last fight. And I was like four pounds overweight. He gets the win. He ends up knocking out Ode, Ode Osborne, right? Ode Osborne. He knocks him out. Um, it was a nice, you know, flashy knockout. It was a little bit of a fast, you know, stoppage by the referee, but whatever. The point is he gets a nice knockout. He came in four pounds overweight. The guy still took the fight. You know, it showed a lack of discipline. Um, at 20 years old, this shouldn't be an issue for him right now. So just questions here about his fighter IQ. The fights we reviewed or the fights that I reviewed here when watching uh, tape on these guys, we reviewed the fight versus Nicolau for Manal Cop, and we also reviewed the fight versus Osborne. Those two links are in the description if you want to watch those fights yourself. Um, as for Zalgas, we watched the fight against Rivera, and we watched the fight against Albazi. Those two links as well are in the description. So we're on the side of Zalgas. I just think right now that at this point, Manal Cop has popped up some red flags. You know, we've seen that there's some issues with either knowing when to push, you know, the pace and pressure. Um, yeah, he's got great hands. Yes, he's got knockout power. But Zagas is durable, okay? He's not an easy guy to finish. He could take a punch. Um, so for Manel Kopp, if this fight gets late second round, third round, it gets into his, like, Zagas territory at that point. Manel Kopp, the power will diminish a little bit just naturally because of fatigue. You got a guy like Zagas who's like a gremlin, man. He's just going to be all over you. He has a level of experience. He's, got, he's five years a senior, but he's not an old man. He's still only 33 years old. And with 19 total fights, it's not like he's been in a ton of wars. Okay, he's got a low finish rate. So his path to victory is most likely position control, uh, pushing tempo, um, you know, holding the center of the cage, you know, landing a few hard strikes, getting a few clinch, you know, opportunities. He's been known. I've seen it in some of his fights. He doesn't get much takedowns, right? But he'll get a takedown right at the end of a round. He's got that, you know, veteran mindset of like, I need to win the round, right? So however we look at it here, I don't think minus 250 is a safe bet on cop. If you're just betting that straight up, no, no, not good. And if you're going to parlay that, no, 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 no. I think with Zalgas, he's going to obviously go into the lottery parlay we're going to play. But just straight up as a bet, maybe a quarter unit because I don't have a lot of confidence. I'm not saying Manel Cop can't knock him out or that Manel Cop hasn't gotten better here. He's a young fighter. But, you know, being overweight last fight shows a little lack of discipline. Zagas is a grinder, tough fighter. Um, I think Zagas is just enough here and probably cost a lot of new betters some money here. They're going to see, oh, Manel Cop, 20 years old. He's younger, minus 250, just parlay it, whatever. Uh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, my goodness. Sorry about that. Um, anyway, bottom line is I like Zagas and Magulov as another dog here. I'm playing him as at least at a quarter unit straight up, and I will parlay him in our lottery parlay. That's it.